Greetings and salutations and thanks for clicking on the video. Today we're going to talk about working with Bash in a terminal. And this is a skill that you definitely want to at least be acquainted with if you're going to be running Linux. The Bash shell is basically a program that allows you to talk directly to the kernel. The kernel is the part of the operating system that controls the resources and devices on your computer and allocates those resources for programs. And Bash allows you to manipulate the kernel in such a way uh, that you can talk to it in a humanly understandable language and the computer will do what you want it to do. Bash itself is a Unix shell. It was written by Brian Fox for the GNU project as a free replacement for the Born shell which goes back to 1989 and it's distributed in the GNU operating system Linux and OS 10 and it's also been ported to Microsoft Windows and some people will say that Linux is archaic or old-fashioned because you have to do a lot of commands to do anything with it that's absolutely not true we have lovely GUI desktops these days <clears throat> very modern and you could run your Linux computer without ever opening a terminal and probably not even miss it. However, there's a lot that you can do in Bash and sometimes uh, doing certain things on the computer is actually more efficient if you just open up a terminal and type in a few commands. And also, what happens if your GUI environment doesn't work? If your desktop locks up for some reason, the only way to troubleshoot it may be to go to a terminal. And also, a lot of the help that you're going to find from uh, Linux users who offer that sort of thing in forums and uh, anywhere that you find it is probably going to involve you putting a lot of commands in the terminal to fix the problem. And that's because people who are very familiar with Linux are very comfortable working in the terminal and instead of trying to tell somebody okay open this window and click on the third button over here and if this is here click it but if it isn't it's over here it gets confusing it's a, a lot easier just to list commands and most of the programs that are on any computer, not just Linux, but any computer, uh, their configuration is stored in text files. And you can do a lot just by opening them up and editing them. And besides, Windows and Mac, both of them, there are certain operations that you have to open up something like a terminal or a command line or whatever they call it in those systems and enter commands to make it happen. So. Uh, we are not at a place yet in computer technology where everything is point and click all the time. And like I said, this is a good thing to know. Now this is an introductory video. I'm just going to show you how to get to a terminal and <clears throat> maybe give you a couple of basic things at the end of the video as far as commands are concerned. But if you really want to learn this, I mean, if this is something that you really, really want to know, the best thing that you can do is to check out Jay LaCroix's YouTube channel, uh, Jay the Linux guy, he has got a whole series of videos about working in Bash. He takes you all the way from the most basic stuff all the way to writing your own programs uh, in scripts so you can get the computer to do what you want it to do. Because Bash not only is a, a way to talk to the kernel, it's also a programming language. So there you go. It's not the only shell available for a Linux system, but it is the standard shell. The other shells include things like the C shell, the Born shell, uh, there's Fish, which is a cool shell, Corn is another one. There's a whole list of them. And <clears throat> if this is something that you really get into, you can learn more about those. But Jay has some great videos that take you through Bash, so do check that out. And one more thing to show you is this little uh, wonderful page that I found a few years ago that allows you uh, to just <clears throat> open up a browser and go through the uh, bash commands A to Z. And this is not all the commands, but it's some of the more useful ones. And if you click on some of the commands, then you'll get the manual page for that command, which is kind of awesome. So this is a good thing to have around in case you're working on your Linux system and you need to figure something out. Most people will access their terminal like this. This is the GUI terminal. It's just a little bit bigger and it's running on my desktop. But this actually is not a terminal. This is a terminal emulator. A terminal is something that is provided by the kernel when Linux boots up. And uh, the way we get a terminal is to go to a TTY, which is short for teletype. So when Linux first boots up, 
and the kernel gets loaded up, it loads the shell, and the next thing it does is it loads up TTYs. And TTYs allow you to communicate with the kernel through the shell. And the reason why they're called TTYs is that's short for teletype. Back in the early days of Unix computing, which you know Linux is based on, a uh, teletype was a way that you talked to a computer. You'd sat down in front of this typewriter looking thing that had like a printer, like a dot matrix printer on it or whatever, and you would type commands and it would type it on the paper. And when you got output from the computer, it would come back, it would type that. That's how you talk to it. If uh, Then CRTs came along, of course, that made it easier. But they were still terminals. It wasn't the whole computer. It was just this CRT that was hooked up. So it was hooked up through a TTY port. And then, of course, nowadays, we've got the whole computer sitting in our lap. It's not You're not accessing a system from another room. So by default, Linux will spin up these TTYs, and you can access them. Here you see Ubuntu 15.10 running in a virtual machine, and we're sitting at the login screen. The login screen is actually a program called a desktop manager. In the case of Ubuntu, that is light DM. And the desktop manager is configured in such a way that it automatically runs on a TTY. And when you boot up your computer, if it's automatically set up to open, which usually it is, you'll get this screen and now you can type in, uh, you can log in here and get into your account. And it also allows you to choose your desktop environment. If you have more than one desktop environment installed on your Linux computer, you will be able to switch to it using the uh, desktop manager. And this machine here is not logged into. As you can see, we're not into the Unity desktop environment yet. We're just looking at the desktop manager. And in Ubuntu, the desktop manager runs by default on TTY7. Now keep that in mind because that's important because I'm going to show you how to open a TTY in, uh, right now. Um, as a matter of fact, if you're on a Linux box, you can try this, but don't do it until I tell you how to get out of it, okay? <laughs> you're going to get really confused. So, what I'm going to do to open this is I'm going to use a combination of keyboard uh, commands or keyboard keys in a certain combination to make that happen. If you are running a Linux system and you're actually running on hardware, the combination would be alternate control and any of the F keys from F1 to F8. Usually, most Linux distributions will spin up eight TTYs. In Ubuntu, the desktop manager will run on TTY7. In Linux Mint, it'll run on TTY8. That varies from distro to distro, so you'll just have to experiment around. Um, so if I use a key combination in my virtual machine, for VirtualBox, <clears throat> if you're running in a virtual machine, it's the host key, which is usually the right control key, and an F key. So we're going to switch to a TTY, and we are there now. So let's zoom in and see what we got. And it's given me some uh, error messages there, which we don't really need to worry about. And so we're on TTY1. I can go to TTY2. That's just simply uh, using either alternate control or the right control key if you're in a VM to go to uh, different F keys. And as you see, I'm now on TTY3. I'm on 4, and the number keeps going up. And when I get to 7, I'm back to the desktop environment because it's still running. So if I want to log into a TTY, it's really simple. Just log in and then give it your password. And you are now in the system. Clear all this garbage off the screen. And you are now logged in. Of course, now you don't have access at this point to any GUI applications. So you can't run Firefox. You can't run things like that. However, there are many tools within the GUI, or the rather the uh, terminal environment that do the same thing. You can actually install a web browser that will run in a terminal. You get no graphics, but you'll get the text. And uh, that's more advanced, and you can learn more about that on your own. I just basically wanted to show you how to get in here. And when you log in, it automatically dumps you into your home directory, and you get that lovely prompt. So if I list storage, you'll see that I am in my home directory on this Ubuntu machine. If I want to switch back to the desktop environment, it's just a matter of using the proper control uh, keys, combinations, and then switching around. So I can switch back and forth. I can actually log in twice. So 
I'm now logged in in the system in two places. I'm on TTY1 and I'm on TTY2. So it's very useful if you want to just sit down on a machine and get something done real fast. Somebody else could be logged in and using the machine. You just say, hold on, get out of my way for a minute. Bam, go in there, log in, get it done, switch back to the user environment. They're back to where they were, get up and walk away. If your user environment, if the, uh, um, the desktop environment was what I meant to say. If your GUI desktop environment crashes and it doesn't work, you still have access to the machine. You can get in here and troubleshoot that problem or at least give it a proper shutdown. So that is how you use TTYs. So switch back to the desktop environment and zoom out here and we will go to a terminal to show you how this works. Okay, so if you are accessing your terminal through your desktop environment, what you do is, is you open a program that is actually a terminal emulator and it kind of gives it gives you the idea that you're in a terminal and when you open it up it logs you in. <clears throat> so I'm actually logged in twice to this machine and I will show you that by using the users command. Okay, And now it shows that there are two users logged in, me and me. So I'm logged in twice. If I open up another terminal here, okay, and then I type in the user's command again. You see I'm logged in three times. So that's how that works. So this terminal that we're looking at is actually on a TTY. To find out which one we're on, just type in TTY. And it tells me that I'm on TTY1. So that's how this works. You're emulating a terminal which goes and opens up another TTY on the machine. Pretty cool. If I open up another terminal and I type in TTY, it's telling me now that I'm on TTY3. If I open another terminal, I'm going to be on a different TTY. See, now I'm on 4. So uh, this can go on because the system can generate more TTYs as it goes along. You can uh, literally have hundreds of people logged into a Linux system and that goes back to the days when these uh, this operating system and Unix, which is what Linux is based on, would run computers that would have hundreds of people logged in. But by default, when the system first comes up, it spins up eight TTYs and we have access to those. Uh, pretty cool, huh? So now that we're here, uh, I did want to show you a couple of commands that you could actually use here. First of all, this prompt that you see is actually quite useful. The first thing that it tells you is, is that you're logged in as yourself. And it also tells you that you are on a machine called Dell. So it's Joe at Dell. The little uh, uh, tilde there, squiggly thing, that represents your home folder. And the dollar sign says that we are running with uh, normal privileges. We are not acting as root. I can switch users in this terminal and become somebody else. So let's go ahead and log into Cindy's account. I put the correct password in there. I'm going to log in as Cindy. So now Cindy is logged in, but she is in her uh, directory. The CD command changes directories. And if I don't put anything with it, It'll take me to the home directory, which in this case is going to be Cindy's directory. So now I am in her directory and uh, it's not allowing me to look at her. Well, she's got a bunch of uh, error log files in there. Hmm, I wonder what that's from. I'm going to have to check that out. I didn't know they were there, man. What have you been doing over there, Cindy? Wow. Okay, so you get the point. And if I type exit, I am now out and I'm back to being Joe. So there is the list of stuff in my directory. Pretty cool, huh? All right, uh, another command that you might find very useful uh, when you come over here, and, and as a matter of fact, this is probably one of the main reasons that I come into a terminal, is I want to see what the system is doing. I want to see the memory. I want to see what's going on. The standard command for that is top. And it gives you this screen, which shows you um, all of what's happening with the memory on the system. But it's a little bit confusing. So I like kind of an updated version of it. The one that I like is called HTOP. 
and this is what it looks like. You've seen this before in my videos, and you'll see what the processor is doing, and yeah, that's a lot of processor activity, but I'm capturing video right now, and I also have a virtual machine running, so that is why you're seeing all that activity on the system. It tells me what the memory is, and it will, it will allow me to uh, go in here and manipulate any of these running programs, okay? So this is very cool, and you hit Q to get out. So there's a terminal application I use all the time. Another one, if you just want to look at the memory, would be free. And you put an H on it because it'll give you human readable numbers. And as you can see now, it's telling me everything that's going on with the system's memory. So if you just want to know what the memory is real quick and you don't want to open up an application, just do that. Of course, I use HTOP. That's one thing. Let's clear this screen. Type it correctly so it'll work. Another command that you're going to use an awful lot and probably already are using is uh, the update command and that tells the system to go out and uh, see if there's any new software to be updated and install it. In Debian based systems, Ubuntu, Linux Mint, um, well in Linux Mint and Ubuntu, I don't know about Debian. Debian uses a command that's pretty close. If I would put in this command, sudo, which gives me the you know root privileges so I can do this we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute um, if I just put in here apt update and then I do two ampersands which tells the system hey I want to do this command and then I want to do this command which is sudo apt dist upgrade make sure I get that correct no when touch typing fails and dyslexia kicks in. If I would issue this command right now, uh, the system would go out and see if there's anything new in the repositories, and then it would also uh, upgrade the system. Of course, it would prompt me to say yes, so um, you can also tell the system to say yes just by doing this. Let's go ahead and do that. And we tack a Y on there, and now it'll say yes. Pretty cool, huh? And if you don't want to use a command or whatever, just control C, that will break it. That's the break command, which basically resets the terminal so you can have something running in terminal and you can break it that way. That's something good to know. Another command that you might want to make use of is shutdown. It's very useful actually. So if I put this command here, I'm going to tell the system to shut down. I'm going to tell it to halt and I'm going to give it a time. If I type in now, then what will happen is, is the system will immediately shut down. If I put a time in here, like say I want the system to shut itself down in an hour, if I put 60 in there, that's minutes, and the system will shut itself down in one hour. If I set that command and I want to bring it back, then there's a uh, shutdown with a uh, hyphen C, or the argument C, will actually stop that command. Now you're probably saying, oh, this is really cool, and you're doing all this stuff. I mean, we can look at the, we get a calendar here. We can look at the date. We can see how long the computer has been up and running by putting in uptime, and it tells me all that stuff, and this machine's been up for quite a while. We can see who's logged into the system other than ourselves. All of this stuff, you're saying, these commands are great. How do I learn more about a command? Well, there's one command that you need to know over all the others, and that is the man command. Okay, so we're going to actually man, man, all right? And when we do that, it will sh give us the help file for the man command, and it'll tell us what to do here. So if you want to know what any of these commands do, just run the man, ask the man. It works nicely. And Q to get out takes us back to our terminal screen. We can make all of this work uh, real easy just by uh, typing things in, which to me is pretty awesome. And you can do a lot with your computer this way. So that's just an introduction. By no means is this intended to be a comprehensive video. If you want to learn more, check out Jay's videos. I just can't do it any better than he does. And of course, there are books and other videos on YouTube that you can check out. So thanks for watching the video. I will talk to you again soon. Don't forget to uh, check out EasyLinux.com, like EasyLinux on Facebook, and 
Be sure to check out freedompenguin.com. Just contributed a new article, which will be up very soon there. And you can learn a lot about Linux from articles that I contribute and articles that other people put in as well. So thank you for watching. Talk to you again soon.